Ah, Grand Theft Auto, a series that has played a big part in my video game past. From the beautiful beachside condos of Vice City to the dangerous underbelly of Liberty City, even as far as the hoods and alleyways of San Andreas, I've Grand Thefted a few autos in my virtual time. But there was one GTA game I never got to play. I remember reading about this new Grand Theft Auto game for the Nintendo dual screen. I saw screenshots and I thought, finally, a GTA game I could take anywhere. But I never got around to purchasing it. I have no idea why. Maybe I got distracted by other releases, or maybe I just forgot about it entirely. Who knows, but one glorious day, I came across a box copy and I just had to buy it. Finally, I could experience which I could only dream of. I now had the legendary game in my hands. And this is what I experienced in the first two hours. Let me start by saying that the intro was not at all what I was expecting. It literally starts with a revealing of the contents of a briefcase, large amounts of drugs, which then follows with a transaction. Basically, it opens up with a drug deal. <laughs> wow face! Keep the intro in mind as it's not the only time we'll be seeing drugs moving across the stream. <laughs> this threw me off, as Nintendo of America tends to censor a ton of stuff for Nintendo releases. No idea how Rockstar got Nintendo to give them the okay on this. No loading screen exists as far as I've seen. This GTA just loads up QUICK. Once a save game has been established, from boot to gameplay is about 20 seconds, but if you spam start, it's only about 12. I'm sure many of you have already played Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, but for those who haven't, it's like GTA 4 where you have to go to bed to manually save, though GTA CTW does include autosave. You assume the role of Huang Li, a young man that's a member of the Triads. You're supposed to deliver a sword to some other gang as an, I don't know, some kind of offering, but it ends up getting stolen, and then the thieves attempt to end your life. Now obviously, you survive this murder attempt, otherwise the game would end here, wouldn't it? The first thing you'll notice is that this game is played from a top-down perspective, or aerial view if you prefer that term. I was never a big fan of the older GTA games, also, this perspective put the quote unquote 3D in this game totally makes up for it. Now, you might be asking, is there music in this game? Yes. Voice acting? Yeah! But it's very limited. None of the cutscenes offer any voice acting, only NPCs in the game world, short sentences or questions, or just simple screams and insults. The music definitely excludes any lyrics. They're all instrumentals or actual EDM music featuring hits from artists like Dead Mau 5. Motorcycles are legal in this time period. In other games that take place in Liberty City in the past, they were outlawed, but it seems like they've made a comeback. They were outlawed in Liberty City because they were considered too fast and dangerous, and they still are in this game. Acceleration is insane, and the turning is horrendous. One tap and you go flying. Noob tip, don't use the motorcycles unless you want to fail tons of missions. Most GTA games give you the option to do different missions for different people, but it seems like this game is a lot more linear judging by the first 10 missions or so where it kind of forces you to do these missions for only one person and one person only. I made $2,000 and got a silver safe I can't even use. I purchased 20 weeds and I got a bejeweled smoking apparatus that utilizes water as a filtration system. <laughs> oh yeah, did I fail to mention that you can purchase and sell drugs in this game? This feature that was implemented caused much controversy upon release, but it didn't contribute to pro sales. In fact, it sold 1.33 million copies worldwide on the DS alone. The differences in GTA CTW are vast when compared to other GTA titles. You can find discarded weapons and dumpsters by approaching one and pushing the select button to initiate a minigame where you push trash bags to the side and attempt to find a firearm that can aid with your endeavors. When stealing a parked car, there's a chance the car doesn't have the keys somewhere in it so you'll have to do a hot wiring minigame in order to get it started or a hacking minigame where you'll have to tap numbers in a certain order to get the vehicle to start up. Many OG DS games have little mini games such as this. They're a cool little way in showcasing the DS and its touchscreen, but after experiencing mini games in over 80% of these DS games, it gets a bit tiresome. I like to keep these reviews short, but there's so much to mention in this game, I had to keep myself from adding too much as to not ruin the game for anyone who hasn't played it yet. This game has gotten tons of great reviews, and I can see why. GTA CTW is certainly the game of all time. 10 out of 10 in my opinion. On a bad day, it's a strong 11 out of 10. 
This concludes my very short review of GTA CTW for the DS. Thanks to everyone who stopped to watch the video. I appreciate you all. Have a good day or night wherever you are in the world. Goodbye. Stay peachy.